The Black Forest in southwest Germany is renowned for a certain kind of clock. Imagine you live deep in the Black Forest, those long, dark winter nights. You got a whole lot of time and a whole lot of wood. And that's where cuckoo clocks come from, local peasant craftsmen decorating their precious clocks. One of the oldest clock manufacturers in town is Rombach and Haas. Established in 1894, today it's run by husband and wife team Ingolf and Connie. Ingolf's team will build the Finnish cuckoo clock, but only after he's braved the elements to collect the materials they need. First stop, the workshop of master craftsman Gerhard Berger. Gerhard works all year round, hand carving blocks of linden wood into the decorative surrounds that frame each clock. But you wouldn't hang this colourless surround on your wall, so the frames are stained walnut brown. The clock doesn't just need to look right, it needs to sound right too. So the next stop is the workshop where Holger Kienzler has been crafting cuckoo calls for more than 30 years. As the bird moves out of the little door in the clock, it pulls the bellows open, filling them with air. Gravity closes the bellows, which forces air down through each of the two whistles in turn, making the cuckoo sound. The first fella to make a cuckoo clock way back in the 1700s was actually trying to make a rooster clock, but he couldn't get the thing to sound like a rooster. No problem, call it a cuckoo clock. It's easier to change the bird than the clock. The small leather bellows are glued onto the top of the whistle. They add a tiny weight to ensure the correct speed. The pitch is perfect, but Ingolf is still missing the vital centerpiece, the clock mechanism. SBS Fine Technic have been making clock components for 160 years. The 129 parts that make up each mechanism are all manufactured on site, then hand assembled on a line that runs like clockwork. These are pendulum clocks. Winding the clock raises a weight, storing energy. The falling weight is then used to turn a cog called the escape wheel. Each swing of the pendulum releases one tooth on the escape wheel, allowing it to turn just enough to move the hands of the clock forward one second. These clocks keep time very well, but really you buy them for the way they look. If you're serious about punctuality, then what you're actually after is the latest atomic clock. The last piece of Ingolf's 196-piece puzzle is the Cuckoo's House, which is built here, at the Riesler Woodworks factory. They use plywood and local pine. Plywood for sturdiness, pine for the clock's classic texture. Yeah, this is a, a laser-cut machine. If you would saw by hand or whatever uh, a dial with the numbers and the hands, this would cost probably more than the total cuckoo clock today. The design is fed into a computer and the laser goes to work. No idea what temperature. <laughs> Kein problem. Very hot. <laughs> Very hot, yeah. <laughs> you can use your finger to test. <laughs> Ingolf now has all the components to make a cuckoo clock. But it's not simply a case of assembling 196 pieces. The clock needs to come to life. Cuckoos come in various designs, and Ingolf's wife Connie has painted more birds than she'd care to recall. Many, many, many. <laughs> thousand, thousand, thousand. <laughs> and with her decoration complete, it's time to bring the final clock together. The mechanism goes in, the bellows are added. The clock hands are attached. The carvings are fixed. OK. That's a finished clock. We did it. <laughs> Prices ranged from 200 euros to 15,000. Because a cuckoo of this quality never goes cheap. <laughs>